sure of, then I tell you, the Lord is calling you. He's calling you to recognize that you haven't, you know, people say to me, they say, well, I fancy him calling me a sinner. I'm not a sinner. I'm not, I'm all right, me. I've lived a good life. I've done my best. I don't do anything wrong. I live a good life. And they try to buy the way into heaven. Get themselves there. Listen, you'll never get there. You'll not get to heaven with that theology. You say you're not a sinner. Tell me something. Have you loved the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself, all your life, you've not. So the Bible says you've fallen short of God's glory. But you know, if you'll repent of that and ask the Lord Jesus to come and live and reign in your heart and forgive you of your sins and cleanse you by that that we've been singing, you can be saved. Hallelujah. People like to say, well, they've come to faith. Listen, friends, the, the, dev, the devil believes in God. Do you know that? The devil believes in God because he knows he exists. It's not a matter of coming to faith or coming to our faith. The Bible talks about you being saved. That means you've been rescued from the pit. I'm going off my subject. Right. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, we'll read some verses, the, the great verses, and I get it every time I read them. And I'm bringing them again to you, but not because it's into just scream, come alive in my heart again. We'll just read a few verses. Ephesians 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, in which by he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Jesus Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. My friends, I could keep you here for the next 10, 12 weeks preaching on those verses. There's so much in them, but I'm not going to do. Father, bless your word to our hearts in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you want a text... It's that famous verse. Blessed 
be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. There isn't one of us this morning that doesn't at times struggle. If you say you never struggle, I don't believe you. And some of you might be struggling even this morning. And you know, friends, isn't it strange that when we struggle... If we're honest, we often wobble. And yet, there are some people who can stand firm even though everything around them would make them shudder and wobble. The natural people who don't know Christ would say, well, you see, it's to do with the temperament. Or it's, um, well, you see, they might be optimistic or pessimistic, and it depends which they are. And then somebody else will, somebody else will have a brainwave, and they'll say, well, you see, you don't know what they've gone through as a child. And then somebody else will say, well, you see, it's to do with the makeup, the psychological makeup. But you know, friends, God in this passage of scripture is showing us that there's a foundation, a foundation for joy that can hold you up and remain in place no matter what. When I was in Sunday school, somebody quoted this the other week and I can't think who it was. They weren't quoting me in Sunday school, but they were quoting this. We used to sing a chorus, the wise man built his house upon the rock. Andrew Needham it was, yeah. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. I can't get so high. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the man who built his house on the sand, it fell flat. But the man who built his house upon the rock stood firm. And in these verses, we read earlier from Ephes that we've just read from Ephesians 1. The apostle is reminding these people in the church that there's something to thank God for because he's reminded them of what their solid foundation is. In fact, God is reminding these people how special they are. Has anybody ever told you you're special? Nobody tells me I'm special. Oh, no. But, you know, friends, to feel special is wonderful, isn't it? I used to be special, I think. <laughs> but, you know, friends, the Apostle Paul is trying to get across to these folks not the little joys that keep us happy now and again or for a day or two or for a week or two he's talking about the real fundamentals Things that can keep you solid and firm 
not only in this life, but beyond this life, because he's talking about things that are fixed, things that are solid, and things that remain. And that's what makes these blessings so powerful and so helpful for you in your daily life. Now, as I said, I could spend weeks just dealing with the verses we've read. But you see, for instance, let me just give you a taste. Look at verses four to six. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without the blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Friends, that's fantastic. Think about those words. <clears throat> and then, I'll not read it, but verse 7 actually tells us that we've got redemption through his blood. Friends, we've been ransomed. We've been bought with a price. A price that we could never pay. A price that has kept you and I from going to hell. And I'm not afraid of preaching about hell, friends, because that's what the Bible says. If you've got an argument and a problem with hell, don't give the problem with me. Your problem's with God. Because God says it. And I believe it. And that's the way it's going to be. But then he tells us, just glance down to verse 9. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Friends, God has made known to people like you and I the mystery of his will. When I thought about that this week, I'll tell you, the mystery of his will. This is the eternal God, friends. And what's more, he tells us in verse 11 that we've obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. I tell you, friends, you might not be due to any inheritance from anybody else. If you're young, by the way, you might get an inheritance from your parents one day or from your grandparents or your auntie or your Uncle Billy, if you've got an Uncle Billy. But friends, most of us are past that age where of getting inheritances because we're getting old. So any inheritances that we're due to, we've either had or we're not getting. <laughs> but friends, we have an inheritance this morning. Friends, I tell you, we're told the Holy Spirit of promise is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. You are the richest people on earth this morning. The richest people on earth. You might be saying, well, you wouldn't think so if you looked at my bank balance. 
But let me tell you, you've got an inheritance coming that exceeds anything that these big billionaires will ever have. Friends, we're only scratching the surface, but friends, let me tell you, why did Paul choose those blessings? Why didn't he choose his house? Well, I've got a nice house. I've got a nice car. I've got a nice family. I've got a nice job. I live in a good neighborhood. I've just bought a house. I've just, you know, I've got, which are all wonderful things to have. And yes, they are blessings in and of themselves. But friends, let me tell you, Paul is talking here about something far greater than that. This is why he's chosen those blessings. Because he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You see, friends, these greater blessings are the blessings that will help you to stand in the storm. But can I say something? These are not blessings that everybody enjoys. No use going to your non-Christian friends and reading that because it doesn't apply. It doesn't, no use going reading that scripture to your non-Christian friends because they're not blessings that they will ever enjoy unless they submit their lives to Jesus. You see, friends, not everybody this morning can say that God's chosen us in him. Why? Because they don't want the effects of that blessing on their lives because they're rejecting Jesus. Not everybody has been redeemed through Jesus' blood. Can I even tell you something this morning? I know people who say to me, well, what do I want forgiveness for? I don't need forgiving. I don't do anything wrong. As I said to you earlier, there are so many who will go to funerals this week who will talk about somebody looking down on them from up there. And they don't even know where they are. I went to one funeral conducted by a humanist celebrant who decided that uh, she was calling on the flowers and calling on the petals and calling on the leaves to carry this person to where they were going. Friends, I'll tell you, it wasn't just sad. I cringed in my seat and I said, oh Lord, show them the truth. You see, friends, you can't get yourself to heaven. I mean, God, as I said, not everybody gets these blessings. Not everybody knows the mystery of his will. Or should I say they've not understood it. And you know, friends, the sad thing is you can sit in church week after week and still not understand the mystery of God's will. That's why we need God the Holy Spirit to call on him and ask us to help us to understand. It's not that the Bible's in Morse code. There's not a problem with the Bible. 
But the problem's with us. Because the Bible says our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. And therefore, when you hear the gospel that you need Christ and you need a saviour and you need to repent and you need to call upon him as your saviour, your heart will twist and distort that message because Satan has put blinkers on your eyes. In fact, he's blinded your mind so that you can't understand it. And only Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, can reveal that need and bypass that deceitfulness in your heart. So they're not universal blessings. But they are blessings for every one of us who know that we've no hope except through the blood of Jesus. And who've trusted him as our saviour. And friends, if we will take these blessings, they will bless you every day of your life. I better move on. I'm nowhere near in my notes, I'm wondering. But can I say, first of all, these blessings are special because they're from God. That's why Paul is praising God for wonderful blessings. You see, friends, if I came to Joanne's house and I gave their son sorry a football shirt Joanne would say thank you and Ben would say thank you and hopefully Alfie would say thank you but if one of the main players came from Manchester United or Manchester City, or Liverpool, whatever you support. And they supported the same team. If that player knocked on their door at Walton Park, and personally gave them the signed shirt, that would mean so much more to them, wouldn't it? Be so much more precious. And you see, friends, that to a child would be the greatest blessing of all that day. But friends, we are blessed by the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us in many places that he's our Father. But the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why does he put that emphasis because sometimes people get an unhelpful impression about God. You see, some people think that the God of the Old Testament is some kind of ferocious ogre who breeds fire and brimstone and just can't wait to punish people. And then they say, well, the New Testament, you've got Jesus and he's gentle Jesus, meek and mild, loving and merciful. So they scrub out the God of the Old Testament and think he's got deficiencies. But what a terrible heresy and a lie that is. Because if you really understand the Bible, yes, God is a God of judgment, but the Old Testament God is a God of mercy. He's a God of grace, and he's a God of compassion. And when you come to the New Testament, yes, Jesus does appear loving and compassionate and merciful, but also the New Testament tells us is the one who's coming to judge and to punish. Friends, I tell you, you see, though the Father and the Son, the two did, two of the persons of the three of the Trinity, though they're distinct, they work together. Along with the Holy Spirit, they work together to bless us. You see, the only trouble is, some people, when they talk about being blessed, they kind of think that God's got some kind of vending machine in the sky. 
You know, a bit like then they have in Preston Hospital. You know, you put your money in and a packet of crisps comes out, but you find it's not a packet of crisps that's coming out, it's a packet of hula roots because you pressed the wrong button. But a vending machine. Or they think that blessings come from a God who's reluctant to give them. But friends, let me tell you, Blessings flow out of the goodness of our God. And personally, to all of his children. So these blessings are special to the believer because they're from God our Father. Hallelujah. God the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, these blessings are in the heavenly realms. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. What difference does that make? Well, imagine, I mean, we live in a country now where... Well, they tell us inflation's coming down, but we don't know how long for. Law and order's broken down. And can I tell you something? If you had somebody gave you a hundred thousand pounds and you put it in your bank account, you won't get a lot of interest. Not like they used to. I can remember, do you know, I can remember my mother putting some money in bank, in building society, and they got 10% interest on the return. I tell you, they were fantastic days for them. What is it now? We're about half a percent or something, one point, well, perhaps a bit more, eh? Well, I don't get five at my bank. I'm in the wrong bank. I'm coming to you as Edmund. But I'll tell you, friends. But you know, friends, if you kept that money for 40 years and never touched it, by the time the inflation's gone up and down over those years, you think... £100,000 of 40 years ago, it was worth a lot more than it would be worth today, wouldn't it? True. You know, you could buy a row of houses for £10,000. <laughs> I think my mother paid 900 for her first house. But you know, friends, but if you had that £100,000, just say, and it was put in a bank in some imaginary country where everything was super secure, and you got 20 30% interest... <laughs> I tell you, you'd have much more confidence about your hundred thousand pound, wouldn't you? But you see, Paul is saying here that our blessings are from another country. Blessings, not earthly blessings, but blessings in heavenly places. These are blessings from a country where thieves can't break in and steal and where moth and rust can't destroy. Blessings in heavenly places. That's what makes them different because they are secure in heavenly places. I mean, friends, when he goes on and he talks about redemption through his blood, 
Yes, it was accomplished here on earth by Christ. But you know, Christ is seated now at the right hand of the Father. And that blessing of a, is being bestowed upon us by the Lord, imputed to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's made known the mystery of his will. Friends, those are blessings that will last forever. Blessings from another world. I don't know whether you've got any dust in your house, ladies. Jack will clean it for you. <laughs> Did you do it yesterday? But you know, friends, can I tell you, I'll tell you about a lady. She had some dust. She was from America. And it got valued at over a hundred thousand American dollars. <laughs> I wish somebody would go like that on my mantelpiece and they give me hundred thousand pounds for it. Hundred thousand. Why would somebody pay a hundred thousand dollars for some dust? Because this lady's father's best friend was a man called Neil Armstrong and the dust that she had accumulated or got together had come from another place another world it come from the moon and so a dust was valuable because it had come from another world now listen friends our blessings are from God and they're from another world. They're in heavenly places. I better quickly show up. The blessings, thirdly, are special because the spiritual blessings. Because he says every spiritual blessings. Now, I'm quite sure if England won the next World Cup, some of you'd feel blessed. But friends, that World Cup only lasts for a period. But our blessings will last forever. I was reading in Psalm 103. There weren't much on box last night. And you know, David who in Psalm 102 had been pouring out his complaint before the Lord. Suddenly realized that his blessings were in heavenly places. So he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits and then he starts to list what those benefits are friends i want to tell you our spiritual blessings in christ are far more powerful than any other kind of blessing you can have because the spiritual blessings and you know, friends, we can easily forget the value of our redemption. The value of our hope, our blessed hope, the value of our faith. Because our minds are so busy with the physical and the material that, friends, suddenly these spiritual blessings can easily lose their value. But friends, let me tell you, your soul is of greater value than your body. Because every one of us, whether we're saved or unsaved, have an immortal soul. Even when they put your body in the ground or on the fire, let me tell you, your soul will live on. You've got an immortal soul. Now, I know God is going to give his people a new resurrection body in the new heavens and the new earth, but 
But friends, the body is temporary, but the soul is permanent. If you brought your child a present, say five or six years ago, and it was a brand new computer, they loved it. But that same computer is worthless today because it's now an old computer. In fact, if you went to buy the same computer, you couldn't buy it because it's obsolete. And you know, friends, the things that you have in this life are like that. They're very useful. Of course they are. The things to be thankful for. But friends, they'll only do you good while you're on the earth. But spiritual blessings, hallelujah, remain forever. You know, friends, I've been forgiven in Christ. And because I'm forgiven, I can get to heaven. The hope that I have in my coming Savior, the love that I know from God the Father, spiritual blessings, the more valuable. Lastly, these blessings are special because they're in Christ. What does our text say? Let me find Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. You know, we have a lot of vulnerable people in our society and it's very important that we care about them. Our police, our councils, our social services and mental health units are needed more than ever before. People are walking around and getting stabbed every day. You put a new lock on your door, you can put an alarm on your door and they might make you a little less fearful or help you to get a better night's sleep. But those of you who live with more than one person in the house, there's nothing more important than that reassurance that comes from your partner or from the people you live with. There's nothing more comfortable for children when a mother protects her children and reassures them so that they feel a lot better because their blessing is in their mother, isn't it? And you see, the blessing that we have is in Christ. They're not just blessings that Jesus gives, they're in him. We've received them because we've received Christ. I know of some, Christ, some people call Christians arrogant because we say there's something so special about Jesus and there's no other name under heaven or given among men by which people can be saved. But listen, friends, you will never receive these blessings that we've listed this morning unless you're in Jesus Christ. You go through those verses. I've not time now. But you read them again when you get home. Verse 4, in him. Verse 5, it mentions Jesus Christ. Verse 6, accepted in the beloved. Verse 7, in him. Verse 9, verse 10, verse 11, verse 12. Verse 13, it's all in him. There's no better place to be this morning than in Christ. So, friends, let me encourage you in these closing moments that this morning, appreciate again that if you're in Christ, you are blessed. 
And whatever you're struggling with, I don't underestimate that by any way means because I feel for you. Because we all know what it is to struggle with certain things at times. But let me tell you something. Rest in that foundation that you have in Jesus Christ. Because where would you be today if you didn't know him? Friends, let me tell you, he's got you right in the palm of his hand. Be encouraged, be blessed in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to sing it, but we used to sing a chorus. I have tried to count his blessings. Sorry. No, not that one. I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, when 